Welcome back to Gravedigger FM, the only channel dedicated to all you night owls and late night listeners. Whether you're on the graveyard shift or sticking it to the Sandman, old Charlie Brave is here to keep you company until the sun shines and the rooster crows. It's about 4 a.m. here in the studio, which means we are just a couple hours shy of quitting time, which also means our lines are open again. Let's go ahead and take some callers over here on line one. Hello, caller, you're on Gravedigger FM. What's on your mind? Hey, Charlie, long-time fan here. I, I gotta say, I'm getting real fed up with all these vagrants I've been hanging around town lately. Vagrants? When you say vagrants, what exactly are we talking here? Yeah, junkies. Runaways, punks, all oh, these guys are good for nothing showing up. I worked the bus line over at Hunting Anchors. They just won't stop coming. A cousin hunts near Moon Lake, says they got some kind of hippie commune out there on the edge of town. I'm telling you, I'm crazy from Waco to set up shop here, Charlie. I don't like it one bit. Okay, okay. Well, let's not go down that particular road. Waco was a mess for sure, but I doubt Raccoon City has anything like that to worry about. And as long as these people get a place to stay that's not out in the streets, then all the better for them, especially in this weather. Okay, line two, you're on Gravedigger FM. What's going on? Hi, Charlie. Charlie, I just wanted to follow up on that last caller. You know, he's got a real point. We really should do something about all these people thinking they get us to move into Raccoon. We don't have enough room for them. Have you seen how big the streets are in this town? Half the time I'm wondering if I'm driving down a street or an alley. Ain't these supposed to be two-way lanes? You know, that's a good point there. Part of the reason why I moved closer to the studio. Walking just seems to be the best way to get around Raccoon. But hey, that's life in the almost big city, right? All right, the little red light in here is blinking, which means it is time for another commercial brought to you by our wonderful sponsors at Umbrella Pharmaceuticals. <laughs> Good old Charlie Brave. Visiting hours ended a long time ago, buddy. You lost or something? Well now, on a cold night like this, aren't we all? Um, can I help you with something? Why yes. I was wondering if you could tell me if this sounds a bit too loud. Oh, hey, hey, what the?
William, it's me. I'm at the downtown R&D. The leak definitely came from here. They found Rockwell's messages, William. I've got a few names to sort through, but it'll take longer than tonight. William. Is there any chance they could help? Ryan Irons has declined any comment regarding the ongoing investigation into the death of Benson Nascimento, son of one of Raccoon City's wealthiest benefactors. Tension is also rising with the RPD as the city experiences yet another wave of aggressive criminal activity. Locals blame the violence on the growing transient population reported near the outskirts of the city most notably within the Huntington Acres and the surrounding areas. Our Clay County Sheriff Tim Bravura has stated he is willing to take whatever steps necessary to bring an end to the violence. I'm Alyssa Ashcroft and this has been your evening news update. Back to you, Spencer. <laughs> Detective Vothic. Your guys just arrived. Alone? As far as I can tell. Yeah. I'm on my way. Stall him if you have to. He was hanging around the school again. I'll deal with him. <sighs> Damn. Protect and serve by day, booze and abuse by night. That bottle was supposed to last you through to the end of the month, jackass. I'll be lucky if I even make it to Chase without blacking out in that gutter again. I could use this sleep at least. Most of the time, I avoid mirrors like the plague. No need to see what eight years of blood, sweat, bullets, and paperwork have done. But every now and then I'll find a new low to sing to, and taking a long look afterwards is a punishment that feels fitting enough. Christ, if ever there was a poster child for substance abuse. I couldn't even recall a time when there wasn't some kind of narcotic, 
coursing through my veins. I really should quit. The suit, badge, and gun helped me to at least pretend I had my shit together. Jay's bar was only a few blocks away. I'd need a hustle. I parked my bic in an alley nearby and make the rest of the way on foot. No sense in advertising my presence just yet. Me and Jay went back a ways, having helped each other out of a scrape or two. When I was a rookie, if I looked the other way when the local college kids needed a drink, he'd double my booze for half the price. Now, he was the only ear on the street and I actually trusted him. He's out back. Thanks, Jay. Johnny Durango. He used to be my informant for the Nascimento crime family until someone sent a shiny new Rolls Royce to Chief Iron's front door. Now he gets his kick selling smack cup with all sorts of nasty shit and orders desperate enough to buy. But that's not what I'm looking for tonight. Donnie Durango, big time hustler. Ah, Christ. You're a hard man to reach, Donnie. You don't call, you don't write. And the Don's oldest son is found floating face down in the circular river, and you choose to go dark? Not a great look for some chump CI like you, Donnie. I don't know you a damn thing, Othic. Iron said it himself. I'm clean for my time with you boys. Piss off before the chief hears you stepping out of line again. I grazed you. Ah, police brutality! I rate pretty high on that. Listen good, Candyman. Your boss's kid is dead, which means that family of wannabe gangsters is gonna be out for blood. Which means I'm gonna have a lot of work in my hands cleaning up the mess of bleeding. And I hate cleaning up messes. You and that prick kid of his did more than just a few deals together. You're gonna tell me what I wanna know. Unless you feel like telling me my aim was a little too low. I had nothing to do with this murder, I swear. I was not me, some new guy in town. I'd never seen him before. Real big guy covered in tattoos. This weird fucking accent. Came around asking a bunch of questions at the bar Blackjack. Wouldn't shut up about God and angels and shit. Got a name? No! No name, I swear. That's all I know. I got no business in that stuff. <sighs> Son of a bitch, Othic, I swear to Christ you're gonna get what's coming to you. Iron's just gonna hear about this. Come on now, Donnie. What good would it do you to call the station up and complain about taking a nasty fall into some broken glass? Remember who you're talking to. Fucking prick! And Donnie, if I ever hear about you and your smack pellin ass near the school district again, I'll put more holes in you than a fucking screen door. Is he still breathing? He'll live, but he won't be walking straight anytime soon. Thanks, Sam. No problem, Jay. Ah, oh, Christ. Irons will definitely chew me out for this one. 
Should've just put a bullet in his head and dumped him out of your stone well. Let them deal with it. It wouldn't be the first time. So according to that dope peddling shitbird, raccoons on the fast track to a bad day in Baghdad on account of some giant Bible thumper with an accent in. All units, reports of a Signal 55 in reference to an explosion at the Umbrella RFD Center near Mission Street. All available units, please respond. Jesus. 3 William 65, I'm in route. The son of Raccoon City's worst mafia Don, found dead with three holes in his skull. And now the Oklahoma City bomber decided to pay a visit to one of the biggest corporate centers in the Midwest. All in the same week. I didn't like where this was going. I couldn't help but feel it was gonna get worse before it was over.